Hello everyone and welcome to Valamore Things. Feel free to follow me to see more of my content. Thank you and I hope you'll enjoy the video. Hello guys and welcome back finally for another gameplay video. I know that this took so long but as I said in my previous past I'm really busy lately with working plus playing other games. Or than the fact that there are so many new cards and I don't really have the time to test them all out so... Well, no further talking, as I promised you, I don't know if you're excited, as excited as I am, but here I am with Cat Tribal. So basically, thanks to this card here named Aharabo, the first fang, 3 mana, 2-2, two, two, other cats get plus 1-1 one, plus one when Arabo or another non-token cat you control enters, create a 1-1 one, one white cat creature token, which is, well, a 2-2 two, two, thanks to Arabo's first ability. Well, I was really excited about the Rabo when I first read the spoiler because Cat has already been a tribal, but not as good as, well, you know, elves, goblins, and whatsoever. So here we are with Cat Tribals. Even though we're not playing only Cats, because Guide of Souls plus Ocelot Pride plus Ajani is really good. So here's my list, starting off with one mana creatures, we have God of Souls, also with Pride, two Static Prisons has removals, and four Wild and Cattle. Also four Ender Vial. At two mana we have half course Ajani, even though we cannot really use his zero ability because we don't really have any red permanent other than, well, Johnny himself. So that's just a 2-1 cat warrior and this might be a little um, deck building mistake, but we will talk about this later in the video. Second one, we have Lion Zash, a very good equipment card from Kamigawa that's uh, playing several decks through the years. Uh, it's a 1-1 that basically works as a scavenging goods, but is also an equipment with reconfigure and is also a cat. So very, very good in this deck. Kazali Pride Mage, a, an old modern staple, uh, when modern used to be like exalted bunt or something many, many years ago. So this is still a very interesting card. Exalted, uh, Pay one mana, sacrifice him, destroy target, artifact, or enchantment. That might be relevant. It's a good two drop that helps me curve out. So we're including three copies of this. At three mana, we have, of course, Arabo, as I told you, and Primates, King of Overscores. So this thing kind of is usually under the radar because it doesn't really do much when it enters the battlefield. And in the modern format right now, you cannot really have cards that just hits the battlefield and do nothing. So this might sound like disappointing, but it's the best cat that we have, well, except the Rabo, at three mana. So three mana, three, four, Vigilance, legendary creature, cat soldier. Whenever Primates, King of Oversuits attacks, create a one, one cat soldier creature token with Vigilance that's attacking. And whenever Brimatz blocks a creature, create a 1-1 one, one white cat soldier creature token with Vigilance that's blocking that creature. So pretty huge body. Um, this gives us a bit of, you know, abilities to float the board with permanence after, uh, you know, Pyroclasm or something. So this is actually pretty interesting. We have, of course, one copy of Kahira because Firstly, I included Kahira in the sideboard, but then I decided to add Guide of Souls, so we cannot have Kahira in the sideboard anymore. And I decided just to play one Kahira just for fun because it's a very cute card. And we're playing at 61, so here you have your Kahira Orphan Guard copy. That's basically a cat lord that gives vigilance and plus one plus one to all our cats. And we have Kazali Ambusher, 3 mana, 1 green, 1 white, 1 colorless, rich, 
If a creature is attacking you and you control a forest in the plains, you may cast Kazalian Basher without paying its mana cost, and as though it had flash. So this is very good, especially against early attacks from, I don't know, Ragavan or Ocelot Pride. It's a very interesting trap against those kind of decks. So, and it's also, well, a cat. Mana base. We have one copy of a Ganjo since we have many legends, Ajani, Brimats, and Arabo. One copy of a Ganjo, Seed of the Empire, because it's very versatile and also with so many legends, his cast is reduced. A few fetches, because we want to look for, you know, we have eight fetches because we want to look for uh, Temple Garden for both Kazali Packet and Package and Wild Cattle. Sacred Foundry, because we want to boost Wild Cattle. And also one Jetimus Garden, if you don't have anything better to do. And also counts for both Mountain and Forest towards Wild Cattle. This might be a huge deck building mistake in my opinion, but as I said, we'll talk about this at the end of the video. Three year beds on Canopy because, well, since we don't really have any card advantage system, we might want to sacrifice lands in order to draw new fuel. And five planes. I don't know if this planes isn't matched with other planes. I probably just forgot to do so. Uh, in the sideboard that we have, a few removals, Path to Exile, Static Prison, which is probably the best removal since we are playing Guide of Souls. We already have two in the main on the main board. Rest in peace because Graveyard of Hate is super good and really, really, really undervalued today. And Rest in Peace in this deck is the best white eight you can play. Flare of Fortitude, because this deck also gets eaten by pyroclasm, toxic deluge, and all the hate that gets towards Boros. So this might prevent us from dying from a single pyroclasm. We have Sogay Lantern because it's a very flexible graveyard hate and I love this card. And for Damping Sphere because otherwise we don't have anything against Tron and Amulet Titan, even though Amulet Titan is not very well popular lately. So, now for the talking, we are just jumping into this league, and I promise you, this is going to be hilarious. So, stay tuned for the matches. So, here we are against Gamer Knife Zazo. I don't know him. Who is playing Overgrown 2 on turn 1? So, we kind of respawn with Aether Vial. Which is always better than just slamming a Guide of Souls into nothing, I think. So they go Agatha's Souls Cauldron, so they probably be playing on um, Yagomov. Or that new The Rock deck that plays four copies of Cauldron and Grist. And yeah. So we're just slamming with the Vile and also Lion's Ash. I should have probably played Ajani here and hide the Lion's Ash. Yeah, from Bowmasters, which is yeah, disgusting. I should I made a mistake. I should have just hid the Lion's Ash. I made many mistakes lately. You can tell that I'm not really playing that much lately. So I'm playing Ajani and probably another Ether Vial. No, I think I just forgot to play the Aether Vial. Oh no, well, what I want to do is I am ready to flash in Kazali Pride Mage and sacrifice it if my opponent tries to use Agatha's Soul Scaldron. In the meantime, opponent played Delighted Alfling and Grist the Hunger Tide. So I'm gonna flash in my Kazali Pride Mage and I'm gonna blast the Soul Cauldron now that my opponent is stepped out. By doing so, I also trigger Ajani, the Kettle Avenger. As you can see, that's kind of a deck building mistake, the fact that we don't really have any red permanent other than Ajani, so his second ability is mostly useless. 
By the way, we are flooding the board with so much power right now, thanks to Arabo plus Ajani. And uh, our opponent conceded. We just put a plus one plus one on each cat we had. Opponent, As you can see, opponent has a bunch of useless creatures. A Grist, one card in hand and a little mana. And only three card types in the graveyard. By the way, the opponent disconnected after this match, so we just won without playing a single G2 or G3. Um, and we, we just won. So, yeah. And this is 1-0 in this league. Uh, by the way, as you can see, I just put a plus one plus one on all the cats I have, even though only one could have attacked right now. I have really so many power on the battlefield. Opponent could have just, I think, killed my Arabo, probably. Uh, but still, I I had, um, I think I had huge bodies on the battlefield, thanks to Ajani. His ability didn't trigger yet, so I ha still had a bunch of two twos and three threes, while my opponent had nothing. And yeah, I think my opponent just rage quit by losing to cat tribal opponent if you're looking at my videos please let me know if you rage quit or i don't know you disconnected or whatever well we're just 1-0 in this league that was easy i guess and kasali pride mage proved to be very good because we countered that agatha Soul cauldron a very powerful card with a stupid uh common from many years ago i'm very happy that this happened and arabo proved to be very interesting card also well uh let's meet in the next match match have i said it right oh gosh so hopefully this time we will have a more interesting match and that's dredge and we are probably cooked even though i have lion's ash in the main board i really doubt that i I can do something this time. Opponent already hit an Arcomiba. Yeah. Now they fallit Coliseum and they oh another creeping shield and they are like dredging their entire deck. Oh gosh, serious mode. Uh, Price the amalgam on turn two. Well, yeah, I think I'm cooked. Uh, so I have a static prison, but I really doubt that it's going to be enough. So I should have probably just, I don't know, Static Prison, the Serious Mod Gal, I don't know. Well, they are attacking, I can play Kazalian Basher. Yeah, so Kazalian Basher and I can, I don't know why I didn't block though. I could have double blocked, I don't know. Amalgam and then Static Prison the Serious Melt Gal. So now we have big bodies on the battlefield, but I really doubt that it's going to be enough. Because also opponent has conflagrate. So I think they can kill me. I have conflagrate in the graveyard. And they can dredge so much this turn. Narcomiba, sure. Price the Magam entering the battlefield, sure. We don't really have any removals and also time to erase them because they are up at 20. No, no, no. No way I can win this. I just concede. Okay, uh, let's see what will happen in the next match. So now I am finally on the play and Sideboard is pretty simple. I put in all the graveyard hate I had and I brought out Static Prison and the Cattle and the Kazali Pride Mage. So I decided to keep a pretty uh, slow hand, but I am curving out with Ajani into Arabo into Kahira, which is very, very solid. Which is very, very solid. I'm gonna. Uh, I hope, hopefully, you can see my sideboard here. So, which is very solid, and even though my opponent is flooding the board with 
bodies from the graveyard, I think that my cats will be bigger than his creatures. So, what is my opponent doing, by the way? Show game log. Oh, he, con he conceded. I don't know why, but my opponent conceded. Yeah, has conceded from the game. So he's probably stuck at one land or something. This is a friendly league, by the way. So opponents are more keen to conceding, I guess. I wanted to show you something more interesting than one opponent rage quitting and another one conceding for no reason, but it is what it is. Okay, uh, next match, I guess. Game? Next game? I will never, I know it's a meme already, every single time I say it, and it's been a hundred videos, but I keep getting confused. Next game, right? N let me know in the comments, uh, I don't know, well, I don't know. Yeah, so okay, next game. Match is the whole is the whole thing made of games, right? So I have in this hand I have both Soul Guy Lantern and Lion's Ash. I can probably try and play this Ender Vial. Probably. Because it, I don't think you can do something in one or two dread dredge. Yeah, so he has Creeping Chill, but luckily it wasn't his turn, so he should have played it into in his turn. So now I have Ether Vial. I put Vial up to 1, so I go Temple Garden, and I play Guide of Souls plus Soul Guide Lantern. Opponent gas other worldly gates, which I am fine with. And we exile the Amalgam. So now we can sack Soul Guide Lantern whenever it's needed. Plus we have Lion's Ash. So opponent gas conflagrate on Guide of Souls, discarding all of that cards. I'm probably gonna crack Soul Guide Lantern here. I don't know. Should I? Should I crack? What was I thinking though? Let me check the game log. So I'm not cracking. I'm upping the Ether Vial. Horizon Canopy. And so at this point I can just Vial in the Lion's Ash and start eating with... Oh, and opponent, <laughs> opponent conceded. So he cannot do much with just one Safari Coliseum and tapped. I'm gonna hit Stink with him, and I'm gonna eat Golgavi Fog. I'm gonna... And I'm gonna eat probably Prized Magum. Also, if opponent reveals a Creeping Shield with, I don't know, other worldly gates or something, I'm just gonna crack Soul Guide Lantern eating away Serious Mod Gauls. And if opponent doesn't have a removal from Lion's Ash, spoiler, he doesn't because he only has two cards in hand. Well... It's still probably too late for him. And uh, I even have a Kazali Ambusher. Oh, very, very scary. We already are 2 0 oh, in this league, which is <laughs> surprisingly, surprisingly good record, even though we had one Rage Quitter and one opponent that conceded for having just one land, which is odd, but it is what it is 2 0 oh, in a league, friendly league, for. Cat Tribal. Stay tuned for more in the next match. I swear to God, we cannot start a single time. Oh, we're up against the Drazis, so finally a serious deck. Opponent starts off with Devourer of Destiny, revealing Double Chalice of the Void and uses Mine, so it's probably just Tron playing Devourer of Destiny. Oh, Shelly's the one, Talisman of Impulse, Eugene's Lab, very good. <coughs> Sorry. Luckily, we don't really care because we have Kazari Pride Mage. 
Our opponent cuts left command so on my Kazari Pride Mage. And they have two Yurgis lands. So I think I go Brimates and swing with Guide of Souls. And K command on Brimates? Yes, probably. Oh, that's very nice. This card is a bit too good, I think. And they even have this member on my Guide of Souls. Luckily, I have another Brimats. But they have Eugene the Ineffable. And I have another Brimats. And I think I conceded. Because my opponent was tapping for whatever spell they might want to cast. And oh yeah, they, they brought back the Devourer of Destiny. That's what they're casting. Because, you know... Colorless spells to cast to cost two less to cast. So yeah, Devourer of Destiny was coming, eating away Brimats, and I don't really have anything else into my hand. Shell is on one on the battlefield, so I'm pretty landlocked. Nice, we just lost to Ildrazi pretty easily, even though they had a pretty decent sequence of both mana and removals and locking me away. So yeah, can we win against a serious modern deck with Cat Tribal? Let's see what will happen in the next game. So I really think we come here prepared and my sideboard is ready for, for duty. I think we're gonna keep this hand though. Uh, I'm gonna just speed things up a bit. What is happening? So here we are and Let's take a look at my sideboard to see what I brought in or not. Oh, my opponent always started with Eugene's Labyrinth, by the way, that's insane. So I think I brought out um, Nakatels and brought in Damping Spheres. So my hand doesn't really have anything valuable against Eldrazis, and I'm just gonna try to race them. Thanks to Arabo and Osrod Pride combination of generating tokens, which will allow me to flood the board really fast. I think I can hit 10 permanents this turn, probably, with Ajani plus Arabo plus Trigger from Ostrot Pride and, and win the game on turn four. Yes, look at, <laughs> look at how many permanents I have in the battlefield. <laughs> yeah, it's probably GG on turn four. <laughs> that was insane. <laughs> what is this? My opponent might have an answer. Yes, K command on the Rabo. I mean, my opponent always has Eugene's Lab with Devourer of Destiny plus K command. How many copies does he even play? Well, we don't really care, and my opponent is almost already dead. He's down to six. And we now have the Sidious Blessing. And another Eugene's Lab, sure. The one rig? Oh, Karn. Engineered explosives, probably? I don't know. <laughs> okay, so... Yeah, Engineered Explosives. That was the most... So, by the way, my opponent like is playing really slow. So, if you look at the timer, he already only has 12 minutes left. And every single thing I do, he thinks like 5 minutes about my play. Which is odd. And I think I just won, by the way. Engineered Explosives, okay. Opponent down to 4. No, I haven't won yet. I forgot about explosives. So I still have a lot of cat tokens. Oh, my opponent is right thinking. He gets an A-wire might. So he has Eugene, Exiling Ajani, Warping Whale, Haywire might, so he might want to block. Harabo, that's a nice top deck. 
That's exactly what I wanted. Yeah. And okay, we just beat Tron without doing anything particularly good. We just had a really nice curve of Pride, Ajani, and Arabo. And my opponent had a mediumly slow start. So, yeah. I don't know why he's playing Eugene. That might be a bigger meaning in this, but that's odd. Also, Karn for engineered explosives. Maybe my opponent doesn't have the one ring and he is playing on a budget. That might be the answer to my doubts. Well, we won. We're now tied one on one. Let's see what will happen next. So this is the decisive battle and still we don't have any... Op my opponent always has Devourer of Destiny with Eugene's lab, it's insane. Three on three. My god. So um, I have Adder Vial, which will allow me to play through Chalice of the Void. Um, so yeah, my opponent of course, Chalice of the Void. Okay, so... Karn, and in the meantime, I will activate my vial since Karn won't allow me to do so in the future. And what did my opponent brought uh, with Karn? Oh, he plussed. He plussed. I don't know why, but he plussed. My opponent only has four minutes left, so maybe, maybe if I don't win. He will run, run out of time. So... Sky Sovereign? What? Okay. And he killed my pride. Literally. So, yeah. I can probably kill Karn and swing into him. And stay open to kill Sky Sovereign, probably. So here I misplayed and played Guide of Souls into the Chalice. I was overanalyzing things, so just forget me. Opponent, three minutes left. Ah, can we do it? Can we do it? Can we go 3 0? Reality Smasher. That's not that big of a threat. Oh, he wants to crew Sky Sovereign. I must kill it now with Kazali Pride Mage clutching in. And also Kazali Ambusher, which is not bad. Oh, Damping Sphere. Great top deck, even though it won't matter much at this point. So, five damage into my opponent's face, and he only has two minutes and something. Oh, Damping Sphere, the right time. Eugene? Oh, another Karn. So Karn brings a walking ballista. It's pretty obvious that my opponent doesn't have the one ring at this point. So I can swing. So at this point, I'd rather try not to die and kill Karn rather than forcing my opponent HP. I'll just play it safe. Eugene? K command. K command, yeah. Oh no, right, Ballista. <laughs> oh, I already forgot about the Ballista. Brimats, Brimats, she's not bad. So I swing with Kazali, he gets exalted. Opponent down to eight. They only have one minute and something. So I just kill the Chalice of the Void. I play Brimats, and with Static Prison, I want to exile Reality Smasher. Because Ballista cannot do enough damage to me, to kill me, even though he might get pumped. Six mana. K command this time. K command exiling Brimates, making some construct to pump Ballista's wing in. So I must block and yes, that's it. Yes, that's it. So he can pump the Ballista up to three. Mm, that's scary though. That's really scary. Hmm. 
Another Kazali. And also my static prison charges, energy charges are flying away. So my opponent can one, two, three, four. Ballista can go up to four. But I he can swing, I can double block. He only has 30 seconds and two cards in hand. So he pumps the ballista, sure. Gosh, my heart is racing. I'm going to play the Kazalian Basher and double block. At this point, he might just want to ping my face. He only has 10 seconds. There's no way he can win. There is no way he can win. And the way win because opponent ran out of time. So probably. Uh, we could have probably still won this game, even if my opponent didn't run out of time. Because they really didn't have anything meaningful on the battlefield. While we had two threats and the Damping Sphere and an active Aether Vial. I know that in two turns, Reality Smasher would have come back into his battlefield, but we could have drawn something in two turns, like Harabo or something to close out the game faster. So we are 3-0 in this league. Even though we didn't really play a real, a single real modern game, but <laughs> you see, sometimes this game, especially in friendly leagues, is just <laughs> hilariously stupid. So this is a this is nice. Three O feels like I'm getting reward for all the bad luck I had in the. In the next month, in the last month, <laughs> playing this game. Let's see if we can get to the trophy. I don't know, or maybe the four one. <laughs> I don't know. Stay tuned for the next one. And for the fourth time in a row, we aren't starting. And of course, I keep a one lender because I have many one drops and <laughs> mana tight. What is that about Castle Ardenvale? <laughs> the, the more I'm playing this league, the more odd this is becoming. <laughs> Reprieve? Okay, Sunken Citadel. I think we're playing against Mono White Control of some sort. So that's... I don't know, they're probably gonna crack one of my lands sooner or later. Okay, so I'm attacking first, so they waste their removals here. Probably, I don't know, March. Yes, that's a March. That's it. Okay, so we're slamming a Johnny. Yes. And now, witness the wrath of God. Yes, I knew about that. <laughs> oh, gosh. Why, please? Another Rajani making some bodies. Opponent only has three cards in hand, though. Four now. Three. You're gonna crack one of my lands. We don't really care because, you know. Or, well, I actually do care because I only have two green sources in the deck that I can fetch. And. Five in total, I think, counting canopies. Opponent, another march. Oh, Castle, Castle Ardenvale. Okay, okay, blocking, sure. So, probably double Oswald Pride? No, just one. Just one Oswald Pride. I don't want to fall into another Wrath of God. Demolition Field, sure. And now we are completely cut off colors so Nakatl isn't really an option now okay and our vial I'm gonna swing for four damage play the second pride probably no what is this oh yeah of course castle Ardenvale sure blocking blocking what blocking nothing okay that's suspicious. We're getting some triggers, but 
we are missing one for for the city's blessing. So Gust Quarter, they kill one of my planes. Crucible of Wards plus Gust Quarter. I'd rather finish this game fast. So can I do that now with Janis ability? No, because they can block. Yes, Castor Arden Vale. Sure. That's another nice token we have there. So we're gonna swing with everything we have. These games are so... Like... What is happening in this league? Can't the tribal against mono white control with mana tights and reprieve? Okay, opponent decided to concede. Um, because, well... They probably don't have an answer to so many cats. Okay, well... <laughs> The next game. I really wish I could provide you with some more concrete content, but <laughs> that's the league I played and I just wanted to share it with you. So, by the way, Kazanian Basher out because obviously my opponent doesn't have an attacking creature. And I don't know why, but I wanted to switch Static Prism for uh, Path to Exile, but apparently I didn't. That's probably a, a misclick there, right there. I could have played Rest in Peace and Soulgate Lantern to, you know, prevent, of course, another mana tight. You know, to prevent um, certain mechanics like Crucible of Wars and whatever. But that seemed like a bit overkill. So they have Typhoon Needle. We play Oslot Prime and we get the Reprieve. Yep. I don't think it's really worth retrieving something your opponent can play the same turn. Doesn't really feel worth to me. But maybe my opponent just wanted to buy some time for some reasons. So we're gonna swing. So here I should have just, you know, slammed Kazali Pride Mage, triggering Guide of Souls. But my opponent would have just wasted his march on the guide, so wouldn't have mattered. I should have pumped, but he would have removed my Guide of Souls before. Uh, but I would have had my Pride and I would have generated another cat token. So yeah, mine was a mistake, definitely. By the way, we're cut off green once more. That's... I shouldn't have add, added the cattle to this deck. So I decided to pump the cat because if my opponent wants to commit and kill something he has to choose between the biggest body or the biggest threat well he has wrath of god so he doesn't really have to choose so i decide to path to exile my own creature path to exile my own creature in order to get one land and get a mana boost for next turns hopefully my opponent won't do something that will kill me on the spot um, <laughs> I, I knew about that. I mean, I already knew about that, but I, I didn't remember it was right now. So, okay. Basically, Isaacron Chapter plus Ormin's Chant is an old combo that people played back in like 2000 and uh, I don't know, 2010. Four is Isaac or Scepter from Darksteel or from Mirrodin? Probably Mirrodin, so it's 2003, if I remember correctly. While Orvin's Chant is a few expansion earlier in... Um, it's not Apocalypse, it's the other one. Uh, like 99 or 2000? Probably so. It's a 20 years old combo that, thanks to Modern Horizon 3, now is seeing play in the modern format. And basically, if you don't have an answer, an instant answer to, you know, kill the Isaac Receptor into your opponent's turn, you're locked out from the game. And since we don't really have 
any instant speed things other than Kazanian Basher that it's, you know, in the sideboard. And either via activation, uh, which we don't have right now on the battlefield. We cannot really do much against this, so we are just doomed and we have to pray that our opponent doesn't have it in the next game. This is getting more and more and more stupidly hilarious. So my sideboard changed because I brought out as I wanted Path to Exile and brought in um, Sadic Prison. We have a decent start with Pride Turn 1. Okay, Path to Exile, sure. At least we won't get mana fighted. Maya Jani won't get mana fighted. Typhoid. Yeah, okay, we have the Static Prison just in case. So I should probably play Ajani here. Keep one and go Static Prison on the needle. And by the way, I made a mistake here and instead of pumping, I should have just created a white cat and pump it on the next turn. Because it's from three creatures on the battlefield that pumping gives you more damage than creating a token. And I didn't really calculate that because I'm stupid and I was probably tired while playing that. So no excuses, I'm just stupid and I completely misplayed. And yeah, as you can see now, I would have had three, three twos instead of, you know, two, 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 three, two, and the two, one not attacking. Uh, we have Jetmir's Garden, we can cycle that away. Opponent is down to 11, though. I mean, if I had the one ring, I can see myself playing a mono white control of, you know, like this one. With Isaac on Scepter, Armin's Chant, and Year of the Saga, Demolition Field, and Sunken Temples, uh, The One Ring, and March of the Worldly Light, Reprieve, Mana Height. Yeah, I can see myself playing that. Even though I hate control, at least it's not control with counter spells, so you can still get to play your things. So, well, we top deck a Rabo, and Opponent died, even though he tried to reprieve. So that was pretty easy, this game, because my opponent only had Path to Exile and a March, so nothing scary. A Python Needle we don't really care about, and a Rabo proved to be a nice lord for cats winning us the game. Even though we are not really facing any real modern decks, we are playing against meme decks, even though Dredge is a dredge is a real deck, but you know it's not a tired one, so we're just playing against perhaps inferior decks to ours. So <laughs> I don't really know. Well, that was Yagmoth game one that just rage quit. So well, by the way, this 4-0 in a league with Cat Tribal. Are we getting a trophy with? Cat tribal? My god, this would have been epic. So this is the final match I'm playing in this league. We are 4-0 as you can see down there. Uh, we're up against some sort of Rakdos Jandish deck. What is that? We tried the Guide of Souls, but I should have tried Walnut Cattle first. Yeah. Bolt? Oh, we are... Oh, no, no, not that anymore. No, please. What is called already? Um, oh, gosh. Creativity? Now, look at them. Just straightforward going into persist and reanimating. Just look at them. Yikes! So I'm feeling like uh, uh, we have a mulligan. I'm feeling like we cannot really win against them. I brought in all the graveyard hate I have and of course I cannot see a single one. 
of those cards, which is well frustrating and always mulliganing. I play. I am playing twenty one lands, and this feels like twelve. I always have the mulligan. Well, look at them going bitter reunion once more. Yes, discarding another arch primeval titan. What? So it's not creativity? What What in the world is that? Well, okay, we have Double Vile, Arabo, Path to Exile, Osiris Pride. My opponent has seven cards in hand. We have another land. Oh, gosh. This is not going very well for us. Uh, four, eight, nine. Yeah, I think we're missing one for. Yeah. No, we're missing two for the city's blessing. Oh, pyroclasm, it's not legal. Oh gosh, we just lost to pyroclasm. We just did. Well, another Arabo, which is super good, but I don't really think we can grab the trophy, guys. This is getting so frustrating. Look at them. Persist. Yikes. Yes, of course they do. So so my question is, they only have four persist, right? While we have tone, tones and tones, like seven graveyard hate cards. Why? Even though we mulliganed and they didn't, why? Can they see both Pyroclasm, Persist, and a huge beast? And we cannot see a single sideboard card. You might watch this game and think, oh gosh, Cat Tribal, so stupid deck. But we have the tools to beat the graveyard, okay? We're just unlucky and we're not seeing them, and I don't want to mulligan to five, because one single graveyard hate card won't be enough to beat this deck. Yeah, they even have Valakut now. So what is this? Like Valakut creativity? I don't know. Persist thing. Dot deck? Yeah, another bolt. Sure. Well, it's the first one in this game, but you know, complaining is easier than actually trying to win. So pride. Yeah. Swing with my cat token. Look at how cute is this? Opponent is down to 10. We're halfway, halfway there. So another Valakut. It's not really... Oh, Persist, right. The second Persist. So, okay, my opponent saw three Persist and two Bitter Reunions and the Pyroclasm while we saw absolute zero, absolutely nothing relevant against the Graveyard. I mean, Lion's Ash or, no, no, rest in peace and this game was over. This game was over. Soul Guy Lantern, this game was over. No question about it. Over. But no, we lost the trophy. Even though, well, we didn't really deserve it. <laughs> Anyways. We lost the trophy to a double proceed dot deck. I mean, he saw a lot of cards though. Thanks to Primeval Titan, Bitter Reunion ability and whatever. Yeah, so we cannot really beat serious decks apparently. So that's a far one. Let's talk about this tribal cat deck into conclusions. So here we are for uh, the wrap up. What I would like to change in this deck is probably Cutting out Wild and Cattle because this was a huge deck building mistake. As you saw in the video, Wild and Cattle was the most useless card in the deck, and I would have rather so I would have rather um, saw other cards like you know minus one and a cattle plus one Kazali Pride Mage, minus one and a cattle plus one Kahira, minus one and a cattle plus one Lion's Ash, minus one and a cattle. 
plus one temple garden, minus one sacred foundry, plus one horizon canopy. And that's the changes I will do because Kazali Pride Mage, Lion's Ash, and Kahira are huge bodies that will help in the mid late game. Also, Lion's Ash especially is very, very, very good. And it's much needed against graveyard decks because I don't want to lose the stupid persist um, anymore or just the badge. You know, it's very risky. So Lion's Ash, it's very good also against all those half graveyard decks that plays with the Librium. So very, very good to keep an eye on that. Play your Lion's Ash. In the sideboard, probably perfect as it is. If we're going to play one more Lion's Ash in the main board, uh, we could probably sideboard out one Soul Guide Lantern, sideboard out, uh, sorry, remove from the sideboard Soul Guide Lantern, both of them, add one Rest in Peace and one Flavor Fortitude, because I don't want to die to Pyroclasm once more. And since we share the same hate cards um, that po hits Boros, we're gonna get hit by the same cards, so Flavor Fortitude will help us stay alive against those cards. So that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. I know this was an odd league and, you know, uh, not the regular modern league you want to probably see, but that was fun and the deck proved to be interesting. Will I bring this deck to a competitive tournament or something? Absolutely not. Do you want to go to a Friday Night Magic and show off the best tribal deck uh, of 2024 to your friends maybe with some you know um dci cards uh like the kozali pride mage we have here or something all foilish and very budget friendly so yeah do this you might be able to sneak around some decks and steal some wins because this deck is not as bad as this looks uh, and the 4-1 proves it even though we were really lucky uh well that's all for today thank you for staying until the end if you're not subscribed to my channel please subscribe down here and let me know in the comments what you think about this deck and if you want to play this deck in real or not see you in my next video hopefully very soon